and thanks for, to, uh, to James Richardson and Jesse Clancy for performing. <laughs> That's a lot to digest. <laughs> it's, uh, you kind of, I feel like, tackled and um, really exemplified the absurdity of human life. <laughs> and it's really amazing because it's set in this like future world in a way, but it's like it parodies our entire existence, you know. And so I'm just really curious, like, how did this come to be for you, and and what? was inspiring you and and yeah uh yeah i mean i think that there was this sort of like medieval feeling that i was having where i was sort of trying to it was sort of like an addictive behavior where i would try to look at every thing that was happening through the medieval lens so i was sort of like you know, every, yeah everything that was kind of like, a, like an alternate dimension where everything was you know the, the medieval version and i got kind of obsessed with it um and it was actually painful to live in it <laughs> I was super happy when I was when we, when we finished it because uh, I was like I don't have to live in this <laughs> world anymore. <laughs> it also seems like really inspired by like psychedelics. Is that like is that something that you were exploring with and just like mul like alternate dimensions and realities and yeah. You've never taken any drugs. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> Back to the first part. I don't know. If, um, no, I feel like like you were saying about living in it. When you handed it to me, it was like two months into lockdown, maybe. Right. And there was this kind of like Twilight Zone aspect because. I know you like to kind of work straight for it and finish one step and then and move on. And so I was approaching it that way too. That's kind of how I like to approach things. Yeah. And I was like, is this coming true? Like it was like <laughs> the, the worse and worse that lockdown got. Like it felt like there, this was a very flowery way of writing the present moment. Right. Yeah. Because it was kind of like a, like an yeah. incantation or something, and then the world became like more and more medieval. Like the more that we got into it, yeah. To the point where we're like in some kind of plague quarantine <laughs> and it was the only thing like I was doing I mean it was like I wasn't leaving my apartment so it was you know yeah like working from home at <laughs> the job, job transmissions and then, <laughs> yeah and then in the evening I would open up medieval and <laughs> instead of turning on CNN that was what was happening do you guys want to talk a little bit about your work relationship because you guys have worked together now for a really long time and I'd, I'd love to maybe hear about how your um, process has evolved working together and also this is so different from the other stuff so I, I'm interested in like the process behind that. You know I, I was thinking about how it's so uh, multifaceted like I think me and you are able to have like these like really complicated to-do lists like that are uh, you know all over the place and we're sort of just like yeah I don't know how you keep it keep it together man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you think I keep it together. Um, <laughs> I don't know I I think it really helps to have a collaboration where I don't do at all what you do, and so mm. I'm happy to fill in the blanks like that way. And um, I work really slow, as anyone that's ever worked with me can attest. And uh, <laughs> no, I Adam is very, but, but you're very good at being like, no, we're just going to do this. I'm coming over. We're going to do this, and I'm like, all right, he's coming over. And I'm like, we can take tonight <laughs> off. No, nope. all right, we're doing it. So it's it's good to have that kind of drive. Uh, and motivation, um, you know, fueling the whole thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I don't really know. I mean, like cause me and Yaz were talking about Tom when we were, um, when we were coming over, and like, uh, I don't know. It's just like, I mean, it's like a really, it's pretty mind blowing what what Tom does. Sort of like. Um, yeah, I feel like you could have tried to work with somebody for a couple of weeks to do it, but you're like, no, I'll take Tom in a year. <laughs> That's how much that class special like I that's how much chemistry there is. Yeah. And it paid off. I think it's really incredible what produced. Also I think because we've been doing so much stuff and uh, the world that I draw in is kind of made up of this sort of um, vocabulary of all these sort of reduced cartoon symbols. It's kind of a I call it house I call it house face, but it's basically just a bunch of like you know, most of the world's made of like Big Bird's eye, Garfield's ear a plant, mm -hmm. like I mean like you can just see it repeated <laughs> over like a boob tit, a, boob, a dick tit, 
Uh, I don't know, there's like 30 symbols, and Tom is like, I don't know, he can do he's it in fluent. his sleep, you know, like he, he's fluent in my, in my language, so. Like, I, I don't know, I could trust him like, with, it, with, with any project, and it's like, okay, you know, just make it look like that. No, it's, it's true. With this, it was, it was good. I feel like each project has, yeah, the, the dictates and the Garfield eyes and the, this language, <laughs> it's these hieroglyphs that you kind of fill out the universe. And so you create a new, uni you go into a new story with this universal language and like other things, they, those, they like two symbols that haven't maybe combined before, like it just builds on itself. Um, so it was good, like you gave me yeah. this PDF of text and these folders of symbols and it was these two kind of languages to be like, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I, was, I was thinking that like it's almost like, um, like uh, what do you call it, like a Dungeons and Dragons, like or something like, or, like you know, what I mean? like I feel like each each different time we do it, it's like a new Dungeons and Dragons adventure, like <laughs> from my own like yeah, yeah, role playing yeah. game that yeah. we're doing, dungeon mastering. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like Tom had this, an analogous task to me, which is like, and anyone who worked on Aladdin will have this too that you know that Adam has a vision for something and you'll just believe in it, kind of blind faith, because you don't see it when he's telling you, and then you build it, and you're like, that's what he saw in his mind a couple of years ago. And so when he brings, like, two million lines, it's like somebody bringing you, like, a jigsaw puzzle, and they bring you a thousand pieces, and they're like, there is a, there are a hundred pieces that combine together to make something magical, and they don't give you a cover to the, bo there's no box for you to look at, and it's like, solve the puzzle. And it's like, and I feel like you get something similar, Tom, because you have like so many images, and you have a description of what the vision is. Like, okay, this, you know, um, uh, what's the manuscript example that you, the oh, which the uh, the Nugent's Wake? No, the <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you know, that's, that's it's a reference point that you like to use. So you really have to have blank faith, but then you get there, and then and so Tom, what you made is like it's incredible that like every scene you did something because you gave it to us in install installments over the year. Yeah. And so Adam would always bring his phone, like you know, like several weeks later he'd bring his phone, he'd be like, look, look, and we'd be like looking at the screen for like two and a half minutes of the latest that Tom's done and it always looked different and you'd always done something incredible with it but if somebody had asked you at the beginning what's it going to look like you wouldn't have known right? right. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of like our Prince Valiant or whatever like. Yeah it felt yeah maybe in a way it was like a weekly comic strip or something yeah. like it was like fits and starts where I would be busy with other stuff and so it would take a seat or the world would be extra crumbling and priorities would shift yeah. and then it would pick it back up and it would this like feverish weekend of like diving back into medieval and even watching it now that is it, the first time I've seen it start to finish I've seen all yeah, the like we, all we were working on all the movie. I think it arrived in in the inbox this morning so um, but it yeah it's it, it was these very intense moments of just sitting down with it and putting the puzzle together and then stepping back and then revisiting it and I don't know. That was a fun way to work on anything, really. Like, yeah. And knowing that it, trusting that there was this complete thing that you were chipping away at, and uh, eventually someone. So thank you, Elise, mm -hmm. would yeah. <laughs> give us an actual deadline of, hey, we're gonna screen this. I was like, okay. Yeah, that was we got this July. <laughs> and Yasmin, um, I'm really interested. Well, usually in any partners that can work together in a creative aspect and. I feel like you guys work together so well on so many different levels, but how do you edit him, and how do you guys work together, and what's that been like for you? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's honestly, it is an aphrodisiac, because you're like, wow, my husband's genius, but he's impenetrable, and uh, <laughs> you know, stick with it. You know, we, we like, because I work um, a lot on the job that pays me, and um, <laughs> and so we would do like we'd negotiate when we didn't have kids, we could spend more time. But when, yeah. now we, you know, how how many minutes did you negotiate that we spend on this a night? Twenty minutes a night. Twenty minutes. Um, we use it's our casillas. Like we have matching casillas, and we like. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, yeah. Twenty minutes. <laughs> I swear, I love, I love my 
promise you. And um, it's like I prepare it all so that, that night we like spend these twenty minutes. So we just can't use it. <laughs> and so I tried to take away lines. It's like Jenga. I like, tried to take away lines, and he'd be like, "Okay," I guess. and then I and then I take away, and he'd be, like, "No, not that one." And I'd be like, okay, tell me what this one means to you, and then we would just work through it. And it's really like honestly, it's pretty like inspiring to to understand what's underneath the language. Because I feel like you could watch. It's a bit like Simpsons. You could watch that on two levels, where you're just like, "That's funny," you know, like, uh, "What's a funny line there?" Like, um, can anyone remember a funny line? Like, uh, um. Whatever shiny hamburgers, or you know, like oh, CEOs watching their pornography grow up. I mean, there's like you just what, what, what? The, the condom hats. The <laughs> condom <laughs> hats. Um, where you could just enjoy it on a on a line by line level, but then it's really odd that his muse is creating something that's cohesive, and when you you know like see it, it's pretty like it's really inspiring. So I'm grateful to have the opportunity to work yeah. on your art. And it was we really like joint projects and like we feel like that kind of like is great like glue for us in our lives but this was a very difficult project to like try to do you know like i, I you were really like that was that was really really tough thanks for doing that with I'm good way. <laughs> <laughs> and i don't i know that we've talked about this before but i feel like one of your superpowers is you just like create always and you don't care what anyone thinks about it and it's like in your nature to have to create all the time and that's something I'm really inspired by and I want to know like what is your process and like how do you deal with it because I think so many people are afraid to create right. and what's inspiring is just that you just like lay it all out there and it's incredible so if you had any advice for people that are trying to work through that um you know like uh the the um thank you by the way for saying that um, and then I don't know, like, well, okay, so for the short answer is that I did make this, one time I got asked by a magazine to do an artist guide, so I did an artist guide of these 10 steps that I thought were important, so if you ever want to check it out, I don't know, just type, like, artist guide or something. <laughs> <laughs> Google well, everyone. But, but, uh, but, but, no, but I think that, like, you know, I just, I think that's, I think I have a little bit of a jinx of, like, not doing it, so I just do it, like, all the time, like, uh, Jeffrey Lewis said, like, I, I was like, I was like, Trapan, like, and I have like, um, I have like a direct like link out of my brain that's just going onto paper. But the problem is that it can get to be uh, too much stuff. Like, you know, there's this thing I was saying with, with Yasmin is like, I gave her 150 pages of medieval. It's kind of like almost like a problem, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like maybe you let your muse rest a little bit. You know? <laughs> we talk about take that. A so minute. I, like, I should stop. <laughs> <laughs> But I, no, I don't know, um, and I'll, I, I think that uh, yeah, I think that maybe like just that you know, sort of like in the wrong Ferrari, you know, have that line about you can't be embarrassed enough. So it's really like a lot about just letting things that are in your brain like really like pushing them out and like typing them as they happen into the world and like using them, you know, or like being able to lo to look at them. So that's like a lot of what I try to do is kind of excavate. But also, I wanted the poem to be like a museum. Like I love to go to the Met and the Cloister, the British Museum. And, I wanted the poem to feel like a capsule, like almost the feeling that I have when I'm in the yeah. Metropolitan Museum or something. Like mm -hmm. I wanted the poem to like carry with it like a capsule, of, you know, of like human culture, and uh, you know, almost like if it was being beamed down to space, like it would have some of the remnant inside of it. You know, it was my inspiration. I love that. I feel like you definitely really captured that. Thanks. Um, I'd love to open it up to audience questions. If yeah, if anyone has a question, don't, don't be shy. Yeah. You know. yeah. Uh, as we have to be asked questions, so I'm figuring out what to ask. Um, so I was thinking that maybe the theme of it is kind of about like the war between like consciousness and art and technology. Like it felt like uh, this question of how do you relate to technology in the way it's like, yeah. are you infuriated by it? Do you feel that technology is just like destroying our souls and taking over, or do we have to just surrender and accommodate to it? I guess I wanted to ask, if, you know, maybe you guys reflect on that a little bit. We have so many discussions about it at our house. You know, Yasmin's a technologist. You know, she works for uh, for Google um, and designs uh, technology products for them. So we have this discussion all the time. Um, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, we read a book together about how to was the Kurzweil book about how to design a brain. That was what was it, how to create a yeah, brain. Yeah, yeah. That was like part of the inspiration for this. Um, yeah, it felt like it. Uh, yeah, but it's funny because I feel like he has this. Um, instinct that technology is going to go in a certain direction, and then I'm like, no, that's not quite right. 
And then, like, in three years, I'll be like, that happened. Like, the tech caught up. You know what they say about, like, science fiction writers predict where, where tech goes? Um, so now I do trust you that you're going to be I don't know. I mean, like, uh, you know, but, okay, well, we, we definitely talk a lot about it. I learned a lot about technology from, uh, you know, from, from you. And, and also from Daniel, I learned about technology. Um, uh, I think Daniel pr introduced me to CRISPR, which became a, oh, yeah. Yeah, a, a theme of this. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I think, um, oh my god. Yeah, like, you know, I, I think I have kind of like a neutral view on technology. Like, I mean, I, it, you know, uh, for example, when we made the wrong Ferrari, you know, we were making an iPhone, and I thought that was so great. I remember being like, all the movies are going to be made on the iPhone <laughs> in the future. You know, like, uh, which isn't true. But some. Um, yeah, some. He was the first. <laughs> he was the first. <laughs> but, but after we did it, like, uh, I, I did think, um, the iPhone just seemed a lot more fun back then when we were making the iPhone movie in 2012. You know, um, and you know, be, now I, the future looks a lot more creepy and it feels like uh, I have more of a duality about it, but I, I like to think of like my artwork as just being about a feeling and it's just kind of agnostic or I don't know what the word is, neutral about the pros and cons of technology. It's more just about the feeling of being like, uh, you know, like, 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 like a person in this time. And what I really wanted this, this poem to feel like is a real representation of it. I really feel like it's it is to be alive right now, which is scary and not usually expressed. I thought so. This to me was like a really realistic human portrayal. It sounds kind of weird, but I think it's a realistic, <laughs> average human experience <laughs> is being portrayed in this poem. Yeah. So first of all, loved it. It was I've seen Thank so you. many transhumanist stories, and I've never seen one interpreted in a medieval way like this. Uh, I thought that the atmosphere was incredibly lush and incredibly well realized, so thank you for that. The thing that really caught my attention was there were, you know, in a story that's so much about our kind of cyclical wonder and triumphs and follies and sins as human beings, there are several references to a Hellenic age, you know, and, and I was right. fascinated by the idea that in a cyclical story, there is still a lost golden age. What does that mean Okay, to you? okay. Um, well, I think that I had to play into the dark ages Dark Ages. <laughs> um, no, the, uh, the that that myth to to actually do the poem, you know, and like, and, and I and I acknowledge fully that that is not like a given that there is a such thing as a Dark Ages. Like, it, it's really easy actually to dispel that idea. Like, you can do it in a second. Like, you know, for example, um, to ha like when when people talk about a Dark Ages, they assume that medieval artists aren't doing the kind of art that they wanted to do. They're assuming that they there was like a, a great uh, Greek uh, like standard or Roman standard for how to how to be like an artisan and then it, this sort of like thing happened where everyone got like kicked in the balls and like <laughs> they don't remember how to do it anymore. They don't have the techniques. Um, and so that you know so that, that also is kind of like a little bit pa patronizing to like a medieval artist who maybe just really wanted to make like really cartoony and graphic representations of like really like vibrant emotional things that they were trying to express uh and also um you know just somebody i think Devin said this to me like that i think in uh in the uh what people call the renaissance is actually like when, when slavery picked up the most right like uh so so in a way like when we learn in school about like the end of the dark ages it like coincides with the beginning of mass slavery in like a way that was like never in the dark ages you know so so i think that like there's an easy way you can dispel and say the Dark Ages is just like a cultural narrative trope that doesn't really, isn't really real. You know what I mean? But that is less fun than writing the poem as the Dark Age, which is what, for me, it was only just about the fun of, like, I really wanted to have the feeling of the Dark Ages, same as what I wanted to embrace with the thing. And that was just the anxious feeling I had, is like, oh shit, like, I'm a human, and like, I feel like I'm going into the Dark Ages, you know? But that was just more of an existential feeling, but I don't know if that's true. And I don't even know that this poem is about what's true to me. It's, it's really just, you know, if anything, it's more like if we're just floating through time and there just is like a little mass of like a little meteor and we're just looking over at this shit that we got to stick together for this particular moment is this moving scroll that's like a little clump of ideas and it's just moving right past us and like it never come back again. Like we'll just go on to some other time later. You know what I mean? It's like nothing is permanent. This is just like one moment in time. It's just like completely... If anything, I think this the way the poem is structured is to show how much not permanent anything is and how not true anything is, and it's just 
of feelings, they just come and go by. It's like an opinion for a second. You know, it's just like a blip. Okay. How do you see this existing? So we, we've seen a great experience here with live music, and we're in a very beautiful theater. After this, how does this exist? Do you see it existing in a gallery setting on the internet? I mean, how would you, or how do you like to frame it from this yeah. point forward? Because we put it online, you know. Uh, we, 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 I, I actually uploaded the whole movie online, the whole the, the thing we just watched tonight, and I was going to release it like this week, and so it'll exist on YouTube, but it'll also we there's a gallery show in Nuremberg that we're going to do, um, and uh, we're going to meet we're going to try to screen at the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh where Tom is from, we we did which we did with Aladdin as well, yeah, um, and, and uh, yeah, like and the YouTube version will be different. Depending on everyone's algorithmic advertising, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. Little interruptions. <laughs> yeah, it changes. Holy shit! <laughs> so never the same. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has your. Own. It's the autotopias idea. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. So I don't. But I don't really don't know where it's going to exist. Like I mean, what do you? Oh, you know, uh, spheres. You know, who, who you guys know, Philippe. He's going to make a book of it. Um, yeah, it's. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what's so funny. It's like, to me, like, I really just really wanted to just literally do this one thing, which is just this one thing that we're doing right now. It's the only thing I actually really wanted to do was yeah. just show this to you guys. That's true. my friends, and yeah. love you guys, and that's really was my whole goal of this. Just to communicate this one feeling with you, just right now. It's the only thing I wanted to do. Period. Yeah, like because I mean, we had, we had done a trip to Jerusalem. Like, like there was a few trips that kind of influenced us. We did a trip to Jerusalem, and we did a trip. I did, or I did a trip with um, with a friend to uh, Morocco, right? Um, those were two like kind of medieval trips I took. I don't know. They were kind of one was a Crusader vibe. <laughs> the other was just sort of like kind of medieval. Um, uh, when we went to Jerusalem, you said I want to go to the Holy of Holies. Definitely. And I was like, can't do that. <laughs> the funny thing is that Gaz can go to the Holy of Holies. Yeah, it's not for the Jewish people. Yeah. It's for the Muslims. And then he was like, I can pass. And I was like, you're wearing a scarlet belt. That's not a joke. You can't pass. You can't recite any of the Quran. Audition for the Holy of Holies. So he was obsessed, became obsessed with the Holy of Holies. And it's it's like an like underground trip to go nearer. Right? We did. We went there. But you don't have to go there, so you didn't go there. But I mean, it's a really smart question, you're right. And so it's a pretty magical, biblically place. Um, and in the Quran, everything goes down in this one area. Um, and it's where Muhammad, were you going to talk about that? The night the journey? The night journey? Yeah. Anyway, a lot happens. So yeah. you're like, well. You know, I think the Adam grave is under the sepulcher, right? I, I think that, at least uh, as a former medievalist, uh, it was all broadly mm -hmm. seen to have taken place yeah. in the same place, including Muhammad's. Yeah, going to Jerusalem was amazing because it was like really like ten football fields big was like the entire biblical, you know. I mean, like so much of the, of the, um, you know, uh, of the Old Testament took place, or in the New Testament took place in this sort of that like you got this sort of bird's eye view of, um, you know, what's like over here is where um, the Last Supper is, and like over on that hill, that's where the souls are going to come back, and this is like David's <laughs> castle, and like over there is where Jesus was crucified, and like this is where Abraham and Isaac slept, and like under there is like you know, the blood of Adam. You know, it was like, it was so incredibly compact. It was like, not that much bigger than Roxy Cinema, honestly. It was like all this stuff. Um, so that was inspiring and, uh, yeah, so I, I don't really know about, like, oh, sorry, I don't really know about, like, necessarily, somebody told explain the blockchain to me probably really badly, and the blockchain for me has become this thing where it like, extends like all the way to the, like, the heavens, and I believe it, but I don't really understand that well, you know, but, but, you know, but, but for me, like, I'm climbing up that ladder all the way to the end of time, um, in this poem. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, sorry, 
Yeah, you, I, I, yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I'm, out of all cities, it's Nuremberg. Like, I'm from Nuremberg. So you're going to have the exhibit. It's in the yeah. Deutschland Center. I'm friends with these gallerists. And it's, it's named after, it's the Amber Room in, like, a Russian castle that disappears. So it's, uh, it's, it's strange that you're going to be, like, in this room that disappears. So that's where it's going. Yeah, yeah. like David Copperfield. Kind of <laughs> 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 like, no, I mean, you know, I, honestly, that... It's like whenever I was interested in medieval, I'm like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> and this, um, and the Institute of uh, Modern Art in Nuremberg was interested in it, so I'm going to do an exhibit of medieval with them. And, you know, I'll do, you know, I, I I feel like any kind of museum or something that I would want, like to do it, I'm like, you know, like into doing it. I don't know. I want, I, that's how I want it to be presented because I don't think it's like a like a completely normal movie that would be in like a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fucking beautiful. Fucking beautiful. Thank you. And it's amazing to see building, like, your art, and it's all building this cosmic layer. It's, just, it's really beautiful to see. Um, Thanks. I, I wanted to ask, like, how do you feel, cause, like, the, like, uh, the last two projects, like, War in Paradise, like, digital? They're all digital, right? Yeah, well, no, you know, actually, we drew them in pencil, right? So, yeah, it, it, well, back you know, and forth. Okay. It, Starts digitally, then it's printed yeah. out. The yeah, Tom, Tom storyboards everything before we, cool, cool. before we do it, and then a horrible waste of paper. But we print <laughs> it out um, through a printer, and then Adam and Toby will take it and uh, with light boxes ink the sketches that were done digitally. Then it's scanned back into the computer for the final color and and text and and printing like that. So yeah, that's really yeah. that kind of cancels my question, which is like, how does it feel moving more toward digital and recent stuff and getting away from like the physical paper mache and sculpture and painting? Well, you know, the paper mache stuff. I'm still doing like you know, like occasionally, like I'll make a sculpture, um, but um, you know, and uh, I I don't know. There's, but still though, like uh, like like you know, like in Julie's exhibit that she you know. Uh, she just did it. It's around the corner. You guys should see this. The shoe show. Uh, there's a paper mache shoe that um, you know that, that I just made. Um, but no, I think that Thomas made me want to do digital stuff. Like it's been through, completely through knowing Tom that I've like been interested in it. You know? uh, and I think vice versa. Adam has pushed me more to drawing on paper. I was using <laughs> Photoshop as a crutch for many years. Just knowing that there's infinite undos has, you know. Put, taking that wall down, right. and you can, like, you know, but it's it's fun to to have a, a mixture of both. I think, ideally, that's where I want to I want to be. I, th I think I've caved to the idea that the computer is going to be around and everything's going to go through it eventually. But yeah, I still begin everything on on paper as much as I can. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of nice to just basically draw on paper, but then kind of know like at the end that there's some major problem that can fix it. You know? But basically, we just usually sketches that we make with pencil and we. Have a colorist color it in. Are you going to do anything for the sketches, like uh, exhibit them in, in these shows? Or I mean, I, we would, right? I mean, yeah, they exist. Yeah, you guys a little bit too freaked out. <laughs> 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 or I don't know. We're not. I mean, I don't know. We have, we don't get like that much stuff, right? So yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah. I mean, you, they're in a box. <laughs> so if you see them, you can get a ticket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> under my bed. <laughs> Hi, um, I actually have another question. Um, and this is less for Adam than it is for the two of you. Um, Adam, you seem so clearly drawn in by this enormous like, personal definition of medieval, like that's a feeling you've been trying to yeah. capture. And I know that you two are inspired by his art, but how do you emotionally plug into this kind of world? Like, does that idea that he had medievalism resonate with you? Is there something inside of you that you kind of see differently? Like, how did you enter into this as fellow artists? All right. Um, as far as like the larger conceptual themes, it, it's nothing I would have ever thought to make anything about, um, and so it's great to be presented with that opportunity. I, I think one of the, on like a tangent, one of the problems with lockdown is like you're stuck with your own playlists and you're stuck with your own shit, and it's just like, get me out of here and. Uh, and so anytime that someone else, you know, can present something that you find interesting, it's always great to work on and to kind of dive into the unknown in that way. Um, and then beyond that, I've just found like a really good sort of harmony in how I like to draw and how Adam draws. And um, sometimes I'll have to do some very 
kind of like straight laced or technically like rigid, very, what's the word, like scrutinized or focus grouped or, you know, the project, the, the job job can get ri rigorous, I guess. Uh, and so to have any opportunity to where you can be a little more freer, I mean, that's the biggest invitation for me. Um, yeah, and, you know, being able to work with friends on stuff is, it's great, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, what did you think the medieval thing was about when we were working on it? It was definitely like all, all in our discussions for like a year. <laughs> I feel that in, in these questions interesting because you do bring in your friends, like you have like half the people here are collaborators of yours, and then like, you bring, which is not the only reason they came, um, but you bring them in in their own way, like you're like, James, you're brilliant, you know, and, and Jesse, and so can you make music, and you can see a vision for how they're going to do their own thing, they're not doing your thing, that music is not yours. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom's drawings, like, or Tom's drawings yours, but Tom's, like, animation and storytelling is his, and I do feel that that's also part of your genius, is not just the, the, the art that you produce yourself, but the way that you inspire other people to contribute in ways that, it's very, like, community, it's, like, really different from how we operate in the world today, where we pay people to do things for us, and they do them because they're paid, and they feel like you, you have these incredible artist friends who want to partner with you to create magical things, and it's not necessarily because they're passionate medieval, I know some of you are medieval experts, and I respect that. <laughs> um, but, but that's not necessarily why people are collaborating with you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I was very lucky to have you guys. Um, I don't know. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't. It's, it's just really cool to, to do everything. I, I think I also, um, I guess I really like living in New York, and I like the community that of the people I met. It's important to me. So I don't. I don't really know. I didn't, I really thought of it just now, but I guess it is. Um, I mean, I thought of it in my life, but not in terms of this project. But even this project is still like that. It's all community to me. Um, I feel like this is a really beautiful place to like leave this. Okay. <laughs> so so I, I was gonna play some yeah. songs and um and then uh yeah, we could have a drink. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.